not we're gonna find that group. <laughs> Pull this well down and wait for you. Not you're gonna put us in that neck brace. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Anything else? Any uh, any other questions about the uh, lab? Yeah. When is it due? Uh, it's going to be due a week from today. No, it's a week from today. From, um, a week from the time we complete okay. the, the, the lab. So it will be Monday. Monday. Yeah. All labs due a week after. Unless I tell you. All right. What's Friday? Huh? We didn't do nothing on Friday, oh. remember? Yeah, this Friday. We're preparing. But this Friday we are conference. We might be able to uh, to do two. Yeah. It'll be the, the contrast lab. Anything else? Amanda? No. Okay, anybody else? All right, let's start. Here we go. Objectives you have them, read them on your own. Okay. Huh? You don't? Read them in the textbook. They're oh. there. Yeah. Uh, Carlton or Sean, either, either or. They will. Same with objectives. All right, so assessing contrast. Then I need somebody. Let's have Akin Vasquez tell me what is contrast. How do you define it? different types of contrast and they're like a mid-range and a long scale and a short scale depending where you're looking for if you're doing like an extremity of a finger of a hand you want to see uh, more of a short scale contrast so you get nice bony detail from like a chest you want more long scale kind of like air, air, like the contrast is kind of like blending in so you don't really need you're more looking at the lungs than like the structures of the ribs separating from the vertebrae you just see an outline. Mm -hmm. Okay, one last, uh, one last shot. And I, and I think you're, you're all in the ballpark. Let's see. Uh, <coughs> uh, okay. it, it also shows the, dif uh, it shows the difference in optical density. Yeah, but what? Then we're going back to what is optical density. <coughs> so, uh, how do you understand? 
understand it. Not how the book defines it or how I express it, but how, what is it? How, when you think of contrast, how are you understanding it? Because you're sounding like Bouchon. <laughs> Yeah, so and I don't want you to. I want you to sound like you. I agree with what everyone else is saying. What is it? I agree with what everyone else is saying. Okay, paraphrase it. Put it all in perspective. Um, contrast, like Andrea said, um, you definitely want this long scale and short scale, and the long scale is going to be less shades of gray. This is going to just the short short scale. You're going to have less shades. And why is that important? Um, just to see the different pathologies. Ah, okay. All right, so contrast from what you're saying, right? Contrast gives us the ability to see whatever we're looking for, whatever detail we're looking for. So without contrast, we don't see it, okay? Or with too much contrast, we don't see those details, okay? And also, and I like whoever said it, I don't know, uh, talked about the different tissues. It's important to also adapt the contrast that we want for the tissues that we're trying to image. Okay, so good. So there are different ways in, you, in, in which you can define radiographic contrast and different ways in which we can understand how do we, we are going to apply it. So I think we're, we're on the right track. All right, two photographic factors allow detail to be seen. Once again, the detail that is inherent in the system because it's a geometric factor. But there's two items that we need that will allow us to see that, density and contrast. And remember, density is the base of all the other photographic uh, qualities. So without density, we don't have contrast, right, period. You can have density and not have contrast, but, uh, but density is the key there. Density is the key. You need to have density to be able to then have contrast, okay? All right, so dynamic range. When we think of contrast, we think of a dynamic range. Dynamic range means that it's, it's actively changing it, or, or could possibly actively change. Why do we say that? Because contrast does change depending on your technical factors, right? You can have more shades of gray or less shades of gray. And so when we think of that dynamic range from one value to another value, we think of a window width. Window width means that now you have, this is the scale, this is the range we have. Say, for example, in a range from one to 10, what do you have in between? And an infinite number of values, right? You have 1.2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, and, and, and until you get to 10. So you have a, a, a variety of other values. And so that's what you have in a window width. You have a variety of values stuck between this range of values, okay? All right, so describing contrast, and we, uh, I think we already said, said it. Uh, it is the ability, when you describe it, is, uh, is the number of shades of density values that you have on a radiograph, okay? Every area here has a different density value, isn't it? You know, what is the value here? Zero, we don't have anything, it's, it's, it's white, there's nothing there. Now, we compare it with this value here, it's the same structure, but you look at here, this is a slight, you, you see, the, you see, you see some, some gray shades here, okay? And so you have a different value. And so every area you look at will have different density values. All those set, sets of density values make up contrast. Are we, are we good? We clear with that? Okay. All right. So when we look at a scale of contrast, and this is what I was describing before, for now, ignore the KVPs. Don't look at the KVPs. But by the way, these radiographs were done with a penetrometer. 
the device I show you on Friday. Okay. And here you have, <coughs> see, for example, you from here to here, okay, you have different sets of value. Uh, let's look at this one here. It's easier to see. See, you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we kind of lose the rest. Mm -hmm. Okay? But now, if we look at this one here, you begin to see one, two, three, but see how slowly the shades, it's difficult to see because they are blended. But you have more set of values here, more gray values, more density values here than what you have here or here. Okay, are we good? Okay, now we can look at KVP. KVP is the factor that influence uh, is the primary factor in controlling contrast. Let me say it again. KVP is the primary value or it's the primary factor in controlling contrast. Why is that? Well, because KVP uh, gives you more or less scatter radiation. Scatter radiation is what is going to give you this blend uh, or this range of contrast, okay? When you have high KVP, you're creating less scatter radiation, but you're creating the scatter radiation that is being created reaches the image receptor, okay? And so the end result is that you see more scatter radiation in the image and plate, and that's why you get this with this higher KVP values compared to low KVP values. With low KVP, you have very few photons, scattered photons, reaching the image receptor, and that's why you see very few shades of gray. I'm afraid to say it because I'm afraid I'm misunderstanding it. So if you increase the KVP, does that decrease the contrast? Or does it depend? It will decrease the contrast. Okay. Yeah. But it will, the other way to look at it, it will increase the range. It will increase your window width. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, I feel like that threw me okay. off now. All right, let me write this down. Okay. You think of high contrast. Another way to say it is an equal sign. Another way to say it, this is a short scale. Okay? Why short scale? Because the scale of ranges that you have is very short. You have very few, right? When you say uh, low contrast, <coughs> Another way of saying it is you have a long scale. The scale of what? The scale of densities. Here. Does it help? Scale of densities or grays? Or grays, same thing. Okay? See, because when I think of uh -huh. more shades, <coughs> I think of 40 KVP having more shades. Yeah, yeah it looks like it has a lot of white and no, gray. No, that's black. because you. Your, our eyes, not you specifically, but our <laughs> eyes don't have the ability to see all of the grades that we have here. But if we put this under, under very intense light and we put it behind, then you begin to see that there are more grades here. Okay. So more shades exist, they're just kind of harder to see? They're just harder to see. Okay. So yeah, the high, uh, so the high contrast is short scale, and it's gonna have just like it is. Uh, yeah, and it's gonna have uh, less shades of gray. Very few shades of gray. And it's gonna appear more. An wider. example of this will be this. This is a high contrast, short scale. Okay. Why? Because we're seeing. I can count them. I can go one, two, three. One, two, three, four, mm -hmm. five, six, seven, and then I lose them. You get here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here, my ability, besides with that, with the uh, lighting that we have here, you cannot see. Go, go to your textbook. This, this same picture is in Carlton. Look at it, and you'll be able to see it. You'll be able to see a little bit more. If we were, see, 
my laptop, I can see way more. If we were to use a densitometer, remember that device I showed you the other day? And if we were to measure here, 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 all the different points, you will see that they have different values. Good. And remember, you have to study this at home too. <laughs> yes, Yonji? So does the low contrast mean that it's high in density? Is this long scale? What are you looking at here? Low contrast? Yeah, but uh, I was wondering about is it not really high in density, but it does not necessarily, but it's having more density values spread across the image. It could be. Oh. Let me let me show you. Let me let me let me show you something. Give me one second. One second. When you look at this image, and let me turn off the lights. <clears throat> when you look at these two images, which one has more density? The 110 has, has more density, the overall density, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I agree with you guys. What will happen, and let's suppose that this radiograph was done at 110 kVp and let's say 5 mass. What will happen if we bring this to 2.5 mass? It's going to have to mesh photos to maybe some quantum model. Maybe. What will happen to the density? The density will go down. We'll probably look, the density will look the same, but the shades of gray are still going to be there. So to go back to your question, which was higher con or lower contrast means higher density, not necessarily. Sometimes. But not always. And that's why I'm giving you this, this example. If we were to cut the mass of this image in half, the density will be like this, the overall density. But the shades of gray that we see here, okay, they're still gonna be here. And you're gonna have more. It will still be difficult to see the ribs, okay? It'll be nice to see all of this, all of this trabecula, but not the ribs, okay? Yunji, that makes sense? All right. Okay, so the number of use, useful visible densities or shades of gray are you, you make use of it. You have to know, you the x-ray technologist, you're the responsible for knowing what body part you're doing and what is it that you're trying to get. What is the intent? When you, for example, if we go back to those chest x-rays, when you do a chest x-ray, is the intent to show the ribs if the patient has a rib fracture? Not for no. chest. No, that's not the intent. the intent. What is the intent when you do a chest x-ray? Lungs. Lungs. To see lung parenchyma. That's, <coughs> that's the idea. That's what you want, okay? Uh, if uh, you don't see the shoulder well, that's not what it's done for. So knowing what you're, the body part that you're doing, and knowing the anatomical density of the part then you adjust your technical factors to get the image that you want, either with high or with low contrast. Okay? Manipulating contrast, okay, is the compression or expansion of range of visible densities. You can increase or decrease that range, okay? How? By changing primarily the KVP. If we change the KVP, we can do that. Okay, can be achieved by changing the log E curve of film. What is this saying? And if I have it in yellow, it's because it's important. What is this saying? We have talked about it. When you change it by a factor of 10, that's 100%. You're in the right. 
right track. When you change it by one, it changes by 10? Yeah, but it's more than that. It's more than that. And, and why is this important? I'm, I'm bringing this up because even though it applies to film, it applies to you manipulating your, your, your uh, computer systems. When you do window width, and you all do, okay? Because I've seen you start manipulating the, the computers and your text do, especially those at Redwood City Kaiser, they, you like to move that scale. Remember I talked about that scale? Many times I talked about that type of a scale. Remember, each body part that you do in a computerized system will have an, a scale of shades of gray that is going to show, right? Some of you are giving me some body, really weird body language. It's like you've never seen this before. <coughs> You guys remember now? Yeah. We uh -huh. talked, I said, remember when I said, uh, if you want a high contrast uh, film, I said, okay, you want something that will be more like this. If you want a chest x-ray, I said, well, you want something that is that will give you more shades of gray. Remember that? Okay, okay, good, good, good body language now. All right, your computer doesn't have different plates, doesn't have different films. Your computer has different algorithms and those algorithms can mimic this. What do I mean by mimic? They can give you what film used to give you, okay? But it, does, it gives it to you by manipulating the raw data in different ways, in sometimes giving you more shades of gray, sometimes giving you less shades of gray. Remember? Good. All right, so now, that's what I said, this, Compression or expansion of the range of density values can be done by either changing the KVP, but that means you have to go back and overexpose and expose the patient again, isn't it? Okay, with computerized systems, a, a lot of times, sometimes you do, but a lot of times you don't have to. You can just reprocess the image or start fooling around with the scales. You guys, those of you, especially those of you at Redwood City Country, should be familiar with this because those technologies, they like to, every time they see an image, they see this little gadget, and they start going Then they go back to the same spot, okay? And then they move it again, isn't it? It's true, okay? And, and that's what they're doing. They are manipulating the contrast. They're manip manipulating how many shades of gray they wanna show. Yes, Kayla. Because you, you're part of that exam, and the techs like to do it, especially if they are not fully satisfied with the image they have. Uh, sometimes the uh, system might not be properly calibrated, and it's not something the technologist does. And so the technologist is, is trying to get an image that <coughs> he or she thinks that you're gonna show the most anatomy. So can the radiologist change it after? He can change class? it back too. He can he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, they can change it too. What is recommended? What is recommended is that you don't play with that. What most manufacturers will tell you is to leave it alone, because they say, and I don't know if it's true or not. Okay, they say that when you start manipulating it you are cutting the ability of the radiologist to change a wider scale, that you limit the radiologist by doing that. Uh, I think it's true for some systems and other systems, I think it's just, they just don't want you touching it, okay? All right, my opinion about Redwood City, and I'm going back to Redwood City because that's the place where I've seen it the most, is I don't think their, their system is properly calibrated. My opinion, this is my opinion. It's not the tech's fault, because all the techs are doing it. And all the techs, if you notice, watch them when they do an abdomen or a chest or something coming. They always go back to almost the same spot. 
may, maybe they haven't communicated what they want, but they pretty much, they all do the same. They all go back to the same values. So what they need to do is the manufacturer needs to come back and tweak that, uh, the algorithm and make it so the techs are satisfied with the image they are doing. So going back to what Kayla was saying, so why are they moving it? Because they're not satisfied with, with the image they have. Okay. All right. So image contrast, image receptor contrast. Uh, and, and I have it in yellow here because this is, refers spe specifically to film. And so, once again, uh, you're not going to be tested on film. Char characteristics of film, you're, you're still responsible for. And so, when Im image receptor contrast is influenced by all of this, in addition to KVP, it will be influenced by the intensifying screen. What type of intensifying screen do you have? Is it fast, is it slow? How is it? Okay. The film density, so it's the film itself, not the intensifying screen, the film. The D log E curve, this thing here, that was designed specifically, these curves that were designed specifically for that film. Remember when we studied film, I told you that we had film that was specific for mouth, film is specific for extremity, film is specific for chest, film is specific for general radiography general work and so each one of them will give you a specific D log E curve and the D log E curve determines how many shades of gray you see. And this is the one where you have a shoulder and a toe? Yeah, and a this, is the, this is the toe, this and is the shoulder. And that's the brightness and then the shoulder is like the dark. This is, this has to do with exposure. So this is exposure and this is density. So this one, see, even though, look look at green here. Even though we keep increasing the exposure, beep, 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 the grayness is just changing as slowly as a sloping up. It's not until you get to this point is when the slope just boom goes up. But before that, very slowly shades of gray. Very slowly was giving you shades of gray. This one, on the other hand, take a look. This one here, very quickly, you begin to expose and boom dark areas very quickly, then it kind of levels off, and then again, okay, goes back up. All right, uh, the way you process the film will also, will say a lot on the contrast that is given, just like what we study when we look at density. And we said, remember when we were on Friday at the other, the other classroom, right? You said, if you leave the, uh, the film in the chemistry for too long, what happens? And you all said, oh, it will get darker, okay? If the chemistry is too concentrated, oh, it will get too darker. Remember? No. In the old room? <laughs> I don't remember Building that. 17, yeah. room 107, 207? Oh, we're at yeah. <laughs> All right, it was there. And then we'll take a look at di digital image receptors, because it's different. All of this doesn't influence the digital image receptors. We also have to, think about subject contrast. And then when we think of subject contrast, this is talking about the body part, the thickness of the body part. What is the part, body part made of? For example, if you have, uh, say, an elbow, okay? An elbow, you have bone, you have soft tissue around it, right? You have tendons, you have ligaments, okay? Muscle around it. If you, okay, knowing that, that you have a combination of something with a very high anatomical density, which is bone, and something with a low anatomical density with bone, and knowing that what you want to demonstrate is, is bone, what type of technique would you set? What do you want? You want high contrast or you want low contrast? Fine. You want high contrast because you want to make it very obvious that this is soft tissue and this is bone, okay? So how do we know that? Well, because you study anatomy, you study physiology, so you know that bone is a lot, has 
the elements that make up bone have a higher atomic numbers than soft tissue. Okay, all right. And then what is the amount of irradiated material? How much are you collimating? Are you gonna leave your cones open? Okay, and the type of irradiated material, what is it? And this is what I was explaining before. What, what is it made, making up that body part? And then the kilo voltage that you will use. You're gonna use high or low kilo voltage. And that depends on the type of radiograph you want. Okay. Image receptor contrast. So let's look at film contrast. So this is the range of densities that film can record. Okay. And films are manufactured differently. You have different type of films. Okay. Did I, I think I told you this before. There were more than 300 different types of film. 300. Okay. And so you have to find what type of film it is and what that, that film will, how many ranges, what is the range of densities that that film will provide you, okay? And so it depends on four factors. It depends on the intensifying screen, okay? You have, remember, how do we classify intensifying screens? Speed, speed right? RS, right? Okay. And what are those are speed? What's the range? Okay. And which one is so slow and which one is fast? What's another name we give to the RS100? R speed. Okay. So those are the slow ones, right? What do we call them as slow? Well, sometimes. We call them a slow because it takes more radiation here, it takes more radiation for them to begin to emit more light, okay? So it will be something like this. Well, this is film, but it can be applied to screens too. They need more radiation to emit the light that you want. Fast screens with very little bit of radiation, boom, they emit light. Okay? All right, so the intensifying screen, the film density, how was your film designed? Remember, when we studied the manufacturing of film, we looked at uh, the size of the grain, was it tabular, was it irregular in shape? Coming back? Okay, so that will determine, and, and how many grains you put uh, per in a specific given area, okay? And so the more grains you put there, right, uh, the, or, or depending on the type of, of grain, phosphorus, okay? Or not phosphorus, I'm sorry, uh, sil uh, uh, the crystals, thank you. And, and the silver halides that you have there, okay, will determine the density of that image. And why do I keep talking about density when I'm talking about contrast? Because remember, the density will determine the contrast. Okay. The slope of the logi curve, this is what I explained here. Okay. And the processing. How are you processing the image receptor? Okay. Are you doing it fast? Are you doing it slow? Are you doing it under high concentration chemicals? How about the temperature? Are you using high or low temperatures? Okay. All right, so here's the uh, film D curve. So take a look. Exposure, what I did there, and density. So as you expose, as the higher the exposure, okay? <clears throat> okay? Uh, for example, if we go here, we're going from, I don't know, let's say three mass. Now we're going to phi mass. This is the shades of gray that you will be demonstrated at that specific exposure value. Make sense? Yes or no? Okay. All right, now. Huh? So why would a hand look dark if you use it, say, for at some time you use 1.6? But then you can see it's a high contrast hand. It's just an X-ray hand. Why would it? Why wouldn't it have darker shades on that on that graph? 
because your algorithm has been designed to work that way. Okay? Your algorithm has been set that if you use that value, you're going to have a high contrast image. Okay? If it was film, you will have to use a film that, that works like. Now, let me ask you this. Okay? Between film A and film, film B, which one is the fastest, uh, fastest uh, film? Your name? A. A, why? Okay, do you agree with that, Napo? Uh, yes. Okay. Everybody agrees with that? Yes or no? Yeah. Are you all with your name? Yes. <laughs> right. I'm with you, girl. <laughs> yeah, I agree with her too. Yeah, so this is the fastest screen, this is the slowest screen. Because with less exposure, you're going very quickly. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. Mona, between A and B, which of the, these two images will show more shades of gray? B will show more shades of gray. Do you agree with that, Dennis? I do. You do. And we say more shades of gray, are we saying high contrast or low contrast? Um, I gotta think about this. It's, uh, you can read it if you long, want. That, yeah, I just, I get confused. Um, and that's uh, why I'm asking you. Long contrast. Long contrast? I mean, uh, oh. low contrast. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Let's get it straight. Long scale or short scale? Let me help you there. Long scale. Long scale. Okay, Long there scale, we sorry. go. Right? Everybody agrees with that? Mm -hmm. All right, good. Let's take a break. Take a 10 minute break. Take a break, but please go out.